So I am uh, Yannick. I'm the core facility manager of the in vivo cellular and molecular imaging lab at the uh, Free University of Brussels. And so MI Labs gave us the opportunity to show you a bit what we do in the lab and more specifically with uh, the SPECT-CT system. So uh, what we do, <coughs> we offer the complete uh, ch uh, value chain from target identification to tracer design in our lab. We go through the entire process of preclinical validation, so in vitro and in vivo. And we aim to bring these probes into the clinic via uh, clinical translation with the university hospital. And we have, as Freik mentioned, not one but two uh, spin-off companies, Presirix for the more uh, therapeutic probes and then Absinthe for uh, more imm uh, immune uh, diagnostics. So the probes we develop are mainly nanobody based. So it's a um, variable domain of the heavy chain only antibody discovered at VUB from Camelids. Uh, they are, so if we look at the traditional antibody, these camels have them as well, but they have a second type of um, antibody which lacks the light chains, which means that this uh, domain recognizing part is very easy to isolate and uh, very easy to radio label or attach to fluorophores, for example. So they're very small, they're very stable, they have um, low nanomolar affinity, they are, have fast targeting and very fast clearance, so they are very ideal tracers for molecular imaging. And so what we offer to academic and industrial partners is mainly tracer development, so the nanobody generation and selection. We have uh, an extensive radiochemistry lab uh, for labeling with gamma, beta, and uh, alpha emitting uh, particles. We do in vitro characterization. We offer several animal models for oncology, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, <clears throat> and then we do offer uh, nuclear imaging, fluorescence imaging, and bioluminescence imaging. And then one step further, we take this into a therapeutic aspect for targeted radionuclide therapy, image-guided surgery, CAR T-cell uh, therapy, and immune checkpoint inhibition. So um, in our lab, the MyLab Vector Plus, I think has been the workhorse for um, over six years since it's been installed in the labs, and we use it to study pharmacokinetics um, organ-specific dosimetry, cell tracking in vivo, immune imaging, and as Frank already mentioned, the possibility of high-energy theranostics, which I will give a few examples of. Um, so also, it's a um, trimodular system, so it's PECT PET CT. Now, the PET is not a ring-based um, uh, system as traditional uh, PET uh, systems, but it's um, uh, collimator based still, but it does offer the possibility to image these 511 keVs um, photons which we use or in comparison we can always switch out uh, these PET, pro, uh, PET isotopes for SPECT isotopes. So in this case we see a comparison between gallium-68 and gallium-67. Now <clears throat> we mostly develop probes for oncology and so as you see here this is um, in the work for HER2 detection. Now, for our preclinical models, um, we, in previous sessions, they mentioned uh, these reporter genes. So here we see, for example, the detection of the tumor uh, with uh, in vivo bioluminescence. But in this, in this 2D image, it's very unlikely to see if it's actually in the brain or if the tumor grow uh, subcutaneously. There will be no way of knowing. It's not very quantitative. But if we sub submit these uh, mice to SPECT CT scans, we can clearly see the probe uptake within the brain tumor, it's located within the, the, the brain, and more importantly, we can quantify these, uh, these signals. And then, um, if we look clinically, so HER2 uh, positive cancers, they respond very well to trastuzumab uh, systemically, but whenever these uh, tumors metastasize to the brain, therapeutic options are very limited and it's still a bit unclear uh, why this is. Um, maybe the therapy doesn't work in the brain or the tumor is inaccessible due to the blood-brain barrier. And so preclinically we can evaluate one of these aspects, mainly um, access to pharmaceuticals. So here we have two tumor models, so HER2 positive uh, SCOF3 and HER2 positive MDA 231MB uh, uh, cells. And we image the tumors with an indium labeled uh, nanobody and indium labeled trastuzumab, so anti-HER2 antibody. And so with the, and with the nanobody, we can already see one hour post-injection 
uh, uptake in these sub millimeter lesions, which is actually very impressive for the, the resolution and sensitivity of this machine. But then, whereas with Trastuzumab, we don't see any uh, uptake one hour or even three days post injection. So, this gave us an indication that some tumors actually are inaccessible to large therapeutic bi biomolecules. Whereas with other tumor types, we do see um, uptake after astuzumab three days post injections, which we then can see, okay, this tumor is more vascularized, there is more disruption of the BBB. So in this case, um, treatment might be more uh, feasible. We also use the SPECT-CT system for in vivo from a, for kinetic studies. So here we normally, uh, when we do dosimetry studies, we have to uh, inject several animals and kill all the animals at several time points, which is very, uh, it requires a lot of animals. With in vivo quantification, we can actually use the same mice, mouse and image it at, at different time points to really uh, see the renal clearance tumor uptake over time. Another example is uh, instead of an instant administration of the tracer, we can encapsulate it in a hydrogel and then in vivo track uh, the release of the radiopharmaceutical systemically and see how it behaves uh, in vivo. And this again is to reduce the number of animals we need for these studies. Then an example of uh, high energy Theranostics to stay with her too for uh, one more slide. So here we have a mouse that is injected in the neck with a very small uh, tumor lesion. And so the first image is actually taken with the biospace photon uh, imager, which is, um, well, here we actually don't administer anything else but the radio radioactive nanobody. So this is pure Cherenkov radiation that we can image in the kidneys due to renal uh, clearance, and then also the signal in the tumor. And then if we go over to the SPECT CT scan, we can visualize also this millimeter sized tumor and again, kidney, up the, uh, kidney retention in, uh, and bladder due to the renal clearance. And then thirdly, as third part, we use the iKids uh, alpha camera to image uh, cryo sections of the kidney to see the impacts of um, certain products we, we, we utilize to reduce this kidney retention. So here we use the gelofrizine, and you can see on these images that there is a, a clear decrease in uh, kidney retention of the tracer. Then <clears throat> it's also been um, well talked about uh, a few times in these sessions how important immune imaging has become over the years. So we also developed several tracers uh, to try to uh, image the immune system. And so in this case, we made a, a tracer for MMR, so the macrophage mannose receptor, and we injected it in mice, again, bearing tumors in the neck. And so we can clearly see um, tumor uptake here but also a uh, high liver uptake, which is quite, um, well, let's say annoying if you want to image tumors within this region. So what we try to do is uh, pre-block this liver uptake of um, liver residing Kupfer cells or, or macrophages by injecting an unlabeled bivalent anti-MMR nanobody, and then afterwards uh, injecting the tracer. And so what we see is a almost complete reduction of the signal in the liver while maintaining this high tumor uptake, which is very nice. And this compared to a control non-targeting antibody to see if there is any aspecific leakage within the tumor, which there is not. A second immune trace, uh, tracer we made is against CD20. Now, in this case, we, in this case, we used it to image uh, lymphoma tumors. So this was actually done in a study to select one of two lead compounds um, to go on with uh, clinical translation. So here again, we see a non-targeting uh, nanobody that doesn't accumulate anywhere except in kidneys and uh, bladder, but in the two, um, well, nanobody lead candidates, we do see nice tumor uptake, but here for one candidate, the 79, we do see much lower kidney retention and much higher tumor uptake. And this was done with the uh, lutetium-177, so a teranostic uh, radionuclide. And then in the next figure, we did the same thing, but then we got him 68 for PET imaging. And here we see similar, very nice uptake within the tumor. And again, for the, uh, another body 79, lower kidney retention. Then the mo probably the most important immune um, marker today, PDL1 for immune checkpoint imaging. So we also developed a tracer against this. And so in the first uh, rows of images, we again <coughs> use the SPECT-CT 
to uh, study the biodistribution of these different candidates to select a lead marker. And here we didn't assess its uptake in a tumor, but in the brown adipose tissue because of the high pd one expression. And then in the next row, we actually used uh, knock-in and knock-down models of pd one expression to really try to evaluate the different expression levels in vivo using this tracer, uh, which is, of course, very clinically relevant. And then the, one, one of the many uh, immune checkpoint imaging um, tracers is uh, LAC3. So again, we recently developed a uh, nanobody against the human LAC3. And so here, again, we used um, this, the MI lab spec CT to see which of the nanobodies has lowest kidney retention, highest tumor uptake. And uh, this is an image from this publication that's currently under revision still. And then lastly, <clears throat> for uh, tracer design. So we recently used um, a multifunctional single attachment point to do multimodal imaging. So here we have one payload that we can attach to a targeting vehicle that consists of an NHS tester for attachment to the protein. And here we has, have a Sci-5 uh, fluorophore and a DTPA uh, chelator. So we have uh, a di diagnostic for image-guided surgery and for SPECT-CT uh, in one probe. So if you can inject a patient, you can submit them to a full-body SPECT-CT scan to really localize the tumor and possible metastases and then go over to uh, surgery and then use a Sci-5 fluorescence to help in image-guided surgery. And you can even use a, a gamma probe after surgery to really see if you have removed all possible lesions. So I would like to thank uh, everyone from the IGMI lab and our collaborators who provided some images to display tonight. Um, I would like, again, like to thank once again MI Labs for the opportunity to present and for their help and support that they've provided over the years. So thank you.